Huh? Right, so last time we were talking about locks. Uh, just to recall, uh, a lock as a type. this type and two functions Right, and uh, we said okay. Uh, so with this, what we'll do is, if there is code, let's say this is code. Right, these are instructions, and let's say these are access. Share data, right? And here's another region of code that accesses share data. Then I'm going to uh, see. I'm going to declare new variables, uh, which are going to act as locks, and I'm going to put false to acquire. Let's say L1 and release L1. Right. And acquire, let's say L2 and release L2. Okay. So these instructions um, here should be are treated as a critical section. These are also called a critical section. And by a critical section, we mean that these set of instructions should execute in a mutually exclusive manner from uh, other instructions, right? From other threads executing the same instructions. Right? So similarly, this other region is also a critical section. Another critical section. We also said that look, uh, if this critical section and this critical section potentially uh, share the same data, then you may want to use the same locks, right? So here I'm using different locks, and I'm making the assumption that this data is separate from this data. But if they could share the same data, then I'll use the same lock. So I'll use L1 here and L release L1 here, right? Also, I said that look, the lock does not need to be only specific to a region, the lock may be actually also specific to the data. So you may actually say not L1, but you can have an array of L1s or lots of different locks. And depending on what data this code is operating, you can take that particular lock. And we saw some examples. For example, if there are multiple lists, so the same fun uh, insert function is called on all these lists, then uh, it's better to have a lo lock per list. right? So every list will have its own lock. So that way, um, uh, threads which are uh, operating on the same uh, list will become mutually exclusive and threads which are uh, executing on different lists will not become mutually exclusive they can still execute concurrently okay right okay so and so last time we were saying that okay so um, you know using so there are two ways to lock one is use force grain locks Right, in which um, use small number of locks. So this is you small number example one of locks. Right, 
problem less concurrency multiple threads cannot uh, now proceed in parallel but uh, the other option is use fine grain lots here you use larger number of locks right so the problem here is that more exam uh, deadlocks for example need to be careful Okay, so so for example, um, we were looking at uh, an example of a, of a of a service called transfer from account A to account B. So this is a function that just transfers. Let's say one rupee, and uh, so let's say this function has code if a dot money is greater than zero, then a dot money minus minus, and b dot money plus plus. Right? So let's say this is my code, right? and I need to make sure so. first thing i need to do is identify what is my critical section right so what is my critical section is uh, is this my critical section is this my critical section well yes this is critical but if i just treat this as a separate critical section then uh, bad things can happen all right because what can happen is this can become atomic but it can interleave with other things for example this check and this check can uh, cause problems so for example two threads come in both and let's say the a account has only 1 rupee so both threads check if it's greater than 0 and both threads come here and uh, now both threads decremented so money becomes negative so that's not allowed so this just treating this as a critical section is not good enough is treating this as a critical section good enough well yes this is better because uh, now what i do i basically um de decrease money here increase money uh, so, uh, so i check and then i decrease right so i'm going to put a lock acquire here and a lock release here right of course uh, you know there's an if condition so i need to make sure that even if the condition is not met So I'll put acquire here, release here, and release here. Right. So let's see what what will happen if that's true. Okay. So let's uh, let's consider these different options. Right. What what are the different ways in which I can put locks in this code? So option one. Is the following. Um, I just put a code. So let's say I'll I'll just write this code again. if money is greater than 0 then a dot money minus minus uh b dot money plus plus okay now question is where do i put the locks let's say i put the locks here let's say acquire l Let's say there's some uh, variable called L, and then I say release it. Okay. So my question to you is: Is this correct? Okay. The answer is 
no this is not correct because what can happen is two threads come in right so let's say there are two threads that come in into this code both let's say initially a dot money is equal to 1 first thread checks says okay uh, it's equal to 1 it uh, second thread also checks it says it's greater than 1 it's equal to 1 it's greater than 0 both threads come here right both threads try to acquire the lock but because of the lock only one thread can acquire it so only one thread proceeds other thread waits right the one which proceeds decrements money releases l and goes forward after it releases l the second thread proceeds it acquires l decre uh, decrements money but there's a problem right the first thread had decremented the money and made it zero the second thread will make it minus one right and doesn't make sense for money to become minus one so this is incorrect right so this is not correct no okay let's see what other things can i do so basically what the problem is that i'm checking the value of money and then i'm decrementing the value of money and i want that both these operations should be atomic right so this entire region where i'm checking and decrementing should be atomic so that if i check then by the time i decrement the value shouldn't change right in the previous example what happened was one thread checked it said oh it's one so it says i'm going to decrement but before it decrements another thread checks and decrements it so the value has changed and now you know you have a negative value which is not true not uh, not valid so what you should do is you should have one thread wait before the check right so let's see let's say option 2 option 2 is if a dot money is greater than 0 a dot money just rewriting the code and b dot money plus plus right so this is my code and now i say okay let's put a lock here acquire l and let's put a release here Now again my question is, is this correct? Okay, so uh, I'll open it and I'll ask, uh, ask uh, the students. So please tell me if this is correct. So please raise your hand and tell me if this is correct. please keep showing the slide here so please tell me is this correct Okay, there is an answer from LNMIT. This is not correct. Why? Could you speak on the video? Hello. Hello. Uh, this is not correct because if uh, A money will be negative, so lock will never be released. 
no i could you repeat uh, so if a money would be negative yeah so, so, so uh, firstly can a money become negative now let's see sorry if it will be equal to zero not negative then uh, a will be acquired and then it will never be released okay so let's see if a's money is equal to zero then one thread comes in it acquires l it checks a one money is uh, greater than zero okay so good so one thing is it's not correct because if a dot a dot money is equal to zero then it will not be released so let's see i just do um and uh, b money uh, is uh, uh, if two threads come in so uh, b money plus plus if they will do it simultaneously uh, then then there can be problem only one uh, like only one will be incremented in, instead of two okay good so firstly i need a release l on this path right so then at least a is a is so thank you elena mighty uh, thanks very much so let's say this is uh, release l so uh, so this this will make it correct because you have acquire and release so on all paths you should release the lock number 1 number 2 uh, if you look at b dot money b dot money is also a shared variable and it's getting incremented if two threads simultaneously try to increment b dot money then um, then there's a problem right uh, then the problem is that two threads try to uh, increment one memory location and recall this is similar to the hits plus plus uh, example that we had so this will be three instructions uh, in um, in most go and so so th here there should be a race condition right All right so let's see so this is not correct so answer is no even this is not correct right because there is a race condition here that we are not handling right so what is another option well the other option is let's say option 3 and option c3 says if a dot money i'm just re rewriting the code uh, then i say a dot money minus minus uh, and the b dot money plus plus Okay, and let's continue from our previous discussion. Let's say I say acquire L, right? And then I say release L, right? I also say release L here, right? As was pointed out by uh, L and my T. Then I also acquire it again here. Right, so that's an option too. So I say acquire L here, right? And I say release L here itself, right? So I am acquiring here, releasing here, reacquiring here, and releasing here, right? Okay. Um, so, so my first question is, is this correct okay uh, once again in um, any answers Okay, so once again, there's a question. Answer from LNMIT. Say he says, no, it's not correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, can we can we talk to him? Okay, please say why it's not correct. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. So I had another issue before answering the question. I would like to ask in the earlier scenario why two threads uh, will increment the B at the same time. They will first have to traverse the acquire statement before coming to that statement. Okay. Okay. Good. 
so the question is in the previous case why is there a problem on b money all right so what can happen one thread acquires that the thread has reached this point and it has just released right okay and now there's another thread that has acquired and it has just released right so even though the threads got serialized in this region in this region they are not serialized right so it's possible that both these threads are standing here and now both these threads try to execute the next statement okay and so you have a problem right what law okay so is, is that clear yeah so right sir okay all right so let's go back to my question yeah please so is this correct no sir this is correct actually i had doubt in the earlier question all right so you think this is correct right okay uh all right okay so let's see well uh, this looks correct because uh, i am uh, acquiring and then releasing so i cannot do anything wrong here because you know if i check that money is greater than 0 then i decrement it nobody else can check a's money or uh, touch a's money in the middle so it looks correct and then uh, this b which is different so you know but b's money cannot be touched by multiple threads let's also see what happens if multiple threads are calling the different values of a and b so it's possible that one thread's a is equal to another thread's b that's possible right so let's say um one thread calls so this is thread one says transfer from account uh let's say x to y right and another thread says transfer from y to x right so both threads so here a is equal to x and b is equal to y and here a is equal to y and b is equal to x things should not be wrong so let's check uh, what happens well uh, what can happen is one thread comes in he says you know so so the other thing that's happening is because i'm using the same lock l in both places this region of code is also mutually exclusive with this region of code right so even if you know one thread says xy and another thread says yx it's okay right because while i'm executing in this no other thread can change the value of money right the problem that i had earlier was that while i'm touching this a's money nobody else should be able to touch a's money right now because i'm using the same lock even if the other threads b is equal to my a he cannot touch that money because uh, you know the say is i'm using the same lock l now let me ask another question let's say this was l1 and this was l2 oh so this was l1 release l1 and this is l2 and this is another lock l2 right and let's say this is release l1 again right so let me write it again just for clarity okay so the answer to this is yes right this is correct okay but let's see another situation let's uh, let's modify this example a little bit so let's say i say if a dot money is greater than 0 then a dot money minus minus b dot money plus plus I stop here and let's say i say acquire acquire l1 right and i say uh, release l1 right and i say acquire l2 and i release l2 okay and of course uh, i need to release l1 here right 
So now, is this correct? So what have I done? I have changed in the previous example, I have changed uh, uh, my single L to two locks. This is option four. I have two locks, L1 and L2. This area is protected by L1 and this area, this line is protected by L2, right? So is this correct? Nobody? Uh, let's say LNMIT again. Let's see. I want to hear what uh, what what do you think? Oh, let's start an interaction with LNMIT because they are answering, I guess. So. It can result into deadlock. It may result into deadlock. Deadlock. If okay. A can it result? Can it result into deadlock? Uh, let's look at this again. Uh, so, can you tell me how it will result into deadlock? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So. So the one answer is it can result in a deadlock. So the answer is no. So that's not true. It, this this code cannot result in a deadlock, right? Because uh, a deadlock requires that you are holding one lock and you are requesting for another lock, right? So you should be holding one lock and you should be then requesting for another lock. In this code, that's not true, right? You're never holding one lock, requesting for another lock. So you, when you hold when you acquire L1, then before you request L2, you have released L1. Right. So you are, it's never the case that you're holding L1 and then you are requesting L2. You release L1 and then you request L2. So there cannot be any deadlock. Right. A deadlock can only happen if you are holding one lock, you have acquired one lock, and then you request another lock. Right. So then there is a possibility of a deadlock. But if you have released a lock, then there is no possibility of a deadlock. Okay, so there's a question from PECUT. Why are we using three release statements and two acquire statements? Well, if you look at this code, uh, it has an if in the middle. So on, you have to have you have to release on both paths. If the if is taken and if the if is not taken, so you are, so this this acquire has two releases, one here and one here. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, okay, so this looks uh, people have gotten confused here. All right, so firstly. There is no deadlock. You can just convince yourself there is no deadlock because you're never holding, you're never holding one lock and requesting for another, right? You are always releasing a lock before requesting for another, so there cannot be a deadlock. Recall that when I talked about deadlock, I said you should be holding one lock and then requesting for another lock. Okay, so there is no deadlock, no deadlock problem. We are going to discuss an example where there can be a deadlock, but in this case there is no deadlock. Right? So, is this correct? Well, let's see. Let's look at this example that I had earlier, where uh, there were one, one thread is calling transform from x to y, and another thread is calling th transfer from y to x. Right? So what will happen is that um, one thread 
so let's say thread one will be here this is thread one right and let's say thread two is here right now notice that both of them are working on whose money thread one's a is account x so thread one is working on x's money right and thread two thread two's b is account x so thread two is also uh, ex, uh, working on x's money right now one of them is working on x's money here and another one is working on x's money here right so is there a problem is it possible that both threads are simultaneously touching money of the same account yes it is possible because you have different locks right here you are using l1 and here using l2 so it's possible that thread 2 is here because it has acquired l1 l2 and thread 1 is here because it has acquired l1 right so what can happen is thread 1 acquires l1 touches x x is money right and thread 2 acquires l2 and also touches x is money right and this is wrong right because you have a race condition so what 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 is what is something wrong that can happen well same thing let's say this one is decrementing the money and this one is incrementing the money and because uh, they are interleaved they, if they get interleaved you can have problems right one thread is trying to decrement the money another thread is trying to increment the money and uh, you know each increment has three instructions decrement has three instructions if they get interleaved then you have a problem So even this is incorrect. All right. So the answer is no. This is not correct. So what was the problem? The problem is, I'm trying to use fine-grain locks. I'm trying to use two locks, but I'm not using them smartly. Right? I'm not using them correctly. I need to make sure that if there is a lock with a certain uh, data. then that the data is only accessed when that lock is held in this case the same data can be accessed with one lock here and another lock here right here it's l1 here it's l2 and so they can have still have a race condition this is not correct okay so what could have made it correct well instead of doing this instead of having l1 and l2 what could i have had i could have said okay let's see option 5 option 5 is uh, let me write the code again say Is it b dot money plus plus option five is instead of using l one and l two, let me have a lock with the with the account itself. So let's say I have two locks, a dot lock and b dot lock, right? And then I say acquire. a dot lock all right and say release a dot lock here right and then say acquire b dot lock and say release b dot lock here okay and say release a dot lock here 
right so uh, actually it should be uh, i mean you don't want the same log to get released twice right so i've been writing release here but it should be really um, you know there should be an else here so you know else release dot log or something you don't want to release the same log twice well it may be allowed may not be allowed in any case right okay all right so is this correct so now instead of having l1 and l2 i have a lock with associated to the account itself right so instead of l1 i am saying a dot lock instead of l2 i am saying b dot lock right is this correct right so my question is again is this correct let's maximize this Is this correct? Well, let's see what will happen in uh, in our previous case. So let's say one thread is doing transfer x y, and another thread is doing transfer y x. So in this case, a is equal to x, y a is equal to y, b is equal to y, b is equal to x. And so the problem that we had last time was that if one thread is here, so let's say t one is here, and it's accessing x, right? And let's say t two. is here and it's also accessing x then there can be a problem right but is it possible is it possible that both t1 and t2 are in these regions and accessing the same data well if you look at it t1 will need to take x's lock right so t1 would have taken x's lock in this case and t1 would be self some sitting here now t2 if it wants to enter this region it will need to take b's lock and b here is again x so t2 will just have to wait here right so wait on x's lock right so now you have prevented that situation where one thread is uh, decrementing money and the other thread is incrementing x's money simultaneously So instead of L1 and L2, if I have a lock per account, so now you basically the invariant is whenever I touch your money, I will take your lock, right? Irrespective of where I touch it, right? I could be touching your money here in this area of the code, then I'll take your lock to touch it. If I'm touching your money here in this area of the code, then I'll take your lock here, right? But I'll always take your lock to touch your money. if i follow this rule then i'll not have a problem right in the previous example i was saying that if i touch your money in this region then i'll take lock l1 if you if i touch your money in this region then i'll take lock l2 but both are going to touch the same money so you cannot be taking different locks you should be taking the same lock right so if you associate a lock with that account then that works the answer to this is yes this is correct okay so the code is acquire a dot lock release a dot lock acquire b dot lock release b dot lock and you know you can you can also release it here So this is an example of how you are going to do fine grain locking. Okay. Right. There may be situations where you cannot release the lock of account A before acquiring the lock of account B. Right. So let us say there is another thread in the system. that is the accounting thread
and let's say the code of this accounting thread is for all accounts sum is equal to sum plus for all accounts a let's say sum is equal to sum plus a dot money and let's say it says okay check that sum is equal to some constant right so let's say the bunched amount of money all you are doing is just transferring money from one account to another but at the end of the day this thread is just checking that you know though no money is being lost right so it's just checking all accounts and summing the money in each account and having calculating the sum and checking if this sum is e is still equal to the original amount of money that i had so let's say this um, you know let, let me rewrite this code uh it is basically saying if for a is equal to 0 a is less than num accounts a plus plus if accounts so sum sum is equal to sum plus what accounts a dot money right okay and let's say i say just uh you know assert that sum is equal to some constant c right? and let's say initially i set sum to 0 okay? and let's say sum is a private variable so it's uh, you know it's a private variable sum is equal to 0 okay so now the question is how should i use the log so this is let's say one thread that's running this code right and so this accounts array is shared so now question is how should i lock right where should i put my lock and let's say there are other threads which are simultaneously transferring money between bank between accounts so you know there are uh, so let's say let's say this is the accounting thread right and those were the transfer threads and let's say in your system you have multiple transfer threads and you have one accounting thread and let's say in your transfer thread you are using one lock per account right so now question is in your accounting thread how should you be locking right so let's look at this code well what am i going to access i'm going to access the money of an account here and i also have an account uh, i have a lock per account so one option is i simply say lock accounts a dot lock uh sorry instead of a lock i say acquire and similarly i should say release accounts a okay so i'm basically saying that if i'm touching account a the money of certain account 
then I should take that part, that particular account's money uh, lock. Uh, right. So in general, figuring out no so locking invariant. So so in general, you know, uh, solving concurrency issues is hard. As you can see in this small example, there are so many choices and you were just, you know, worrying about which choice to take and you may be wondering, you know, if a real programmer has to do, write some more complex code and how does he figure out or how will you figure out where to put your locks, etc. right. So in general, common practice is user locking discipline. where associate and so this discipline is basically associate a lock with every shared datum. and ensure that the corresponding lock is held while accessing that data. So this is one common uh, locking discipline that whenever you're going to access some any shared data, you're going to take its lock. Right? If you're going to access two different da shared data, then you're going to take both locks. Okay. So let's say I'm accessing five variables, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to do some computation over all the five variables. So I should take all the five locks, then do the computation, and then release all the five locks. All right. So that is a common way in which uh, concurrency problems are uh, are handled. This makes uh, thinking very straightforward. That uh, you know you have a lock with uh, every data item, and uh, then you say whenever I'm going to touch this data item, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I have its lock. So in our previous example, we were actually doing the same thing in some sense. We said, okay, oh, I'm touching accounts money, A's money. So let's have a lock per account, right? And make sure that whenever I'm touching the money of that account, I have that locks that account's lock. Okay. However, it is is slightly more uh, more complicated because uh, let's say you have A's lock and B's lock. So in um, so let me uh, let me rewrite that code because it's a little earlier. Let's say I have if a dot money than zero a dot money a dot money right now I had uh, my in my previous scheme I said okay I'm going to um, require a lock and release a lock uh, acquire b lock and release b lock let's say also no. Yeah, by the way, I'm writing uh, release here, but you, you should also make sure that the lock doesn't get released twice. So you should probably do, have an else here or something. Right? Okay. 
all right so so when you're doing this now let's see what can happen at this point here what is the total amount of money in the system you have decremented 1 rupee from a but you haven't yet incremented any money into b so at this point if the accounting thread gets to run it when it calculates the total sum of money it will see 1 rupee less right so let's uh, go here so let's say at this point accounting thread runs and uh, sees what that 1 rupee less Why? Right? Because at this point, you have uh, released the A lock, um, and you have decremented A's money. At this point, the accounting thread gets to run. It will be because all locks have been released. It will be able to take all the locks, right? So it takes A's lock, B's lock, and everybody's lock, and it calculates the sum. And what it finds is that sum is equal to C minus one. Right? So what did you want? So even this is not correct. If if you assume that there is counting thread in the system, this is not completely correct. What did you want? You wanted that the entire transfer from account A to account B should have done been done atomically. It's not enough to say that decrement is atomic and then increment is atomic. Right? It's you, in in this case you wanted that entire transfer should be atomic. So you take money from A, give it to B, and during this entire operation. an accounting thread should not be able to run in the middle only after you have moved transferred the money completely should the accounting thread be able to run right so what did you want here let's uh, go back here so instead of releasing a dot lock before acquiring b dot lock the other option could be to not release a dot lock here right and uh, instead release a dot lock okay so if this happens then you have to acquired a dot lock and you have acquired b dot lock and only after you have uh, you have made the transaction are you releasing the locks so now if there is a, an accounting thread that gets to run here the accounting thread will not be able to get a's lock and so it will wait for this transaction to finish and only then the accounting thread will be able to get its uh, next operation so just to write it cleanly the the best code will probably be you say acquire a dot lock and say acquire b dot lock then you uh, perform your computation And then you release both these. Okay. So this. So basically, the idea is that you want to make do a computation that involves two data items. So, and you want this uh, computation to be atomic. So then you should take both locks. do this data computation and then release both locks right so that's my locking discipline let's not be try to be too clever because when we try to be too clever then uh, bugs can happen unless you are really thinking through everything so if you don't want to think through everything here is a simple simple discipline identify the data items that you want to access in your computation take all the locks corresponding to those data items then do the computation and then release all the locks for uh, for that those data items and that's what i'm doing here right i wanted to transfer money from a to b i take a's lock b's lock do the computation then release a's lock b's lock right simple and correct right 
except that there is a problem of a deadlock here which we had discussed last time and which we are going to discuss next time but um, so assuming no deadlock this is correct so at least this has no race conditions right and uh, together with this code it's correct right so i'll uh, acquire accounts a is lock and then I release uh, B is lock. So once again, I'm I want to make a computation which ha involves uh, looking at the money of all the accounts. So in fact, one way to do this could have been that acquire all the locks for all the accounts in the beginning itself, then compute the sum, and then release all the locks. Right. So in in this case, although I have written it in this way, the the more correct and safer way. So let's look at this code. So this is the safe way, right? I'm going to discuss deadlock next time, but uh, let's say this is, you know, this at least has no race conditions. And if I wanted to be safe in my accounting thread, what I'll do is I'll say for i is equal to zero, uh, i is less than num accounts, i plus plus, get all the locks, acquire. Account i dot lock, right? So at this point, you know, at at this point, you have all the locks. Then you will say for i is equal to zero, i is less than. I'm going to say n for num account, so n i plus plus. You now sum is equal to sum plus accounts i dot money right your computed sum and now you can say release so for i is equal to 0 i is less than n i plus plus release accounts i dot log So once again, you wanted to compute the sum of all the accounts. So you take all the locks, compute the sum, release all the locks. Here you want to transfer money from one account to another account. You take the account, uh, locks for both the accounts, transfer the money, release both the locks. All right. Let's see what will happen. Uh, let's say you know you were in the middle of a transfer. Let's say you are here. One thread is here, and a, an a accounting thread gets to run one of the accounts it will not be able to uh, access acquire the lock and so it will start the counting thread will start waiting here so the if the counting thread is here that means no transfer can, would be going on at this time and so at that time you will compute the sum right okay uh, so so, the, so i'll leave you with this slide um, right and I'll just add another thing. So the discipline is acquire all locks for all data for which computation has to be performed. Beforehand. So this is one, one of the common disciplines that the lock uh, that the programmers follow. Associate a lock with every shared datum. Ensure that the corresponding lock is held while accessing that datum. Acquire all locks for all data for which computation has to be performed beforehand. All right? And then of course after you have performed the computation, you can release all the locks. All right? So we saw how the sum is calculated and we saw how transfer happens. Okay. So questions. Of course, we're going to discuss deadlocks next time. So this code is not completely correct. It has deadlocks. Uh, and we, I'm going to again discuss it on Wednesday. But if there are any other questions for, for how, so I'm, I've basically explained how to decide where to put the locks, how to decide how many locks to have in your system, right? And I'm, uh, and so I've, I've given you a strategy that you know look at all the data, have one lock per data item, and then basically uh, 
make sure that any computation that you're performing, you're holding the lock for that particular data item before you do that computation. All right. Questions? Okay, uh, if there are no questions, uh, let's stop here. Uh, see you all.